If you're new to our channel, please be sure to drop us a like and hit the subscribe button below. You'll be the first in line to receive our new videos. Hey pups and peeps, it's Angie Woods with Dog Psychology 101. We are so happy that you found us. This is our very first podcast and we want to introduce you to the world of dog psychology or another term for that would be natural dog behavior. And uh, we specialize in saving dogs lives who have trouble. It's my son Josh. He's my right hand man and helps me do all things dog. And so we want to introduce you to our philosophy and concept and really explain what dog psychology means and mm -hmm. what is natural dog behavior. Yes. Right, so welcome. Okay. So dog psychology, how would you describe it, Josh? It's it's the I, I guess that would be the the science, the understanding of how a, how a dog thinks, operates, learns, yeah, interprets connects, the world, interprets, yes. yeah, which is nose. Right? Yes. So many people. Um, the first thing I think most people have a hard time with is wrapping their brain around the dog has no words in their head, no words in their head. It's really mm -hmm. hard for people. So they're animals, just like we are. We're animals too, but we have this verbal language. So I think probably primarily the nose number one, but this non-language part. Right. They don't think about the why is this happening what's going on what causes it part mm -hmm. but they're just as intelligent or, or near it with us depending on the dog maybe but yeah. of, of i see it i connect it i, I see what's going on mm -hmm. and whether mm -hmm. it's good bad positive not you know, that's yeah. where we're very we're very similar but very different yes yeah we all hear about how dogs uh live in the moment mm -hmm. and really for those of us who may live in the world where we practice a little meditation you know or something like that that is us living in the moment it's really focusing right now mm -hmm. words corrupt our world it's true it really creates our world and uh, all these little things that are going around whether it's your to-do list or uh being angry at what somebody said to you yesterday dogs don't have it it's a great thing so wrapping our brain around that, yes, very lucky, very, very lucky. So a uh, huge part of our job is teaching people nonverbal language, but really having this understanding about what psychology is. You know, we have human psychologists, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. who uh, they specialize in the way that we think and interpret the world and uh, dealing with situations. Well, dog psychology requires us to learn about dogs and honor the dog. So dogs aren't people. What would you say about that? Dogs definitely are not people. Yes. No frontal lobe. Correct. No thumbs. It's 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 hard. Harder for some than others. You know, but I I think in not to dumb it down, I'm not saying dogs are dumb compared mm -hmm. to humans, but it is a more basic basic, yes. It's hard to explain it because some people take it in a different way. Yeah. Well, here's the way I like to share it. And I had a client share this with me and gave me this thought and I thought it was really nice analogy. So mm -hmm. Uh, dogs are the kindergarten box of crayons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eight simple colors. Yes, they have emotions. People who argue that animals don't have emotions, I think, are just uh, uninformed mm -hmm. or unintelligent. Um, so dogs definitely have emotions, but they don't have the mm. same type of brain that we have, right? Correct. So we have a reptilian brain, mammalian brain. Mm -hmm. We have this awesome human brain. They just can't do what we do, and it's not a bad thing. It's just honoring who they are. Right. So... Um, so understanding that, just really getting people out of their head and kind of into nature a mm -hmm. little bit more. We're going to talk a lot about nature right. and going back to nature. So um, troubled dogs really put us on the map. That's what we specialize in. Really Absolutely. aggressive dog or really fearful dogs and things like that. But we can help dogs who don't have really severe problems. Oh, help, help them relax and have a more balanced relationship. Mm -hmm. And understanding the world. Yes. In a, in a much clearer sense. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, I was, I was working with somebody the other day, and, and they loved the idea that they, they've been working on a lot, a lot of, it, A, it was a dog with without any severe behavioral issues. It was more like the dog, it was a young German Shepherd, silly, goofy, um, was lacking in the self-control, like manners, just mm -hmm. jumping Impulse. all over. Yes. Yes. And they had a, a legitimate level of obedience and they would sit, they would down, it would stay, but it continued to make the same mistakes. Their relationship was still off. Right. And so we started talking and and I explained how, how the way we're gonna learn how to incorporate what we're what we bring to the table is mm -hmm. the dog will now be able to understand through some repetition and some time of what it is you the behavior that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. They're going to learn the manners issue. Right. Because you can tell them to sit when they're misbehaving. 
but more than likely all they understand is you said put my butt on the ground. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. they never connected the behavioral problem that they're bringing. Right. Don't stop the behavior. Correct. Or or do stop the behavior. Right. Because I mean it's I think about it as like my children. This is where it's it's super similar. If if I want a certain behavior, let's say in public at the restaurant when we're waiting for a table, we teach our children how to have manners, mm-hmm. how to sit, how to have a, a lower energy level and a tone. Yes. We don't go to the restaurant and say sit, stay. Exactly. And then we go talk. Yes. Yes. There's That's a whole conversation. The dogs. It's an education. Right. Yes. Many people think because their dog is uh, has obedience training, sit, lay down. Mm-hmm. That your relationship is in order Correct. when it's really all of the other stuff. How do you interact when you're just mm-hmm. sitting in the living room? Mm-hmm. How do you interact when maybe you're going to sit down for a meal? Do you put some boundaries there? So really, natural dog behavior means we set rules and boundaries and limitations on dogs, just like we do our children, right. without being harsh yes. or hurtful or abusive or hitting or kicking or yelling. Yes. So our basic philosophy is calmness and confidence. Absolutely. Yeah, and. Don't you agree that most people come to us anxious, nervous? Oh, absolutely. Unsure? Yes. Fearful sometimes? Mm Mm-hmm. Dogs won't follow that. No. Yeah, so balance Um, the human. You're right. And that... It's hard to be confident when you don't know what to do and you've had these bad experiences Mm -hmm. or you're... you're, Or you're... Maybe you're afraid you're going to cause problems with your dog. You're going to make it worse. Mm Mm-hmm. Make them afraid, anxious, nervous, more aggressive, reactive, whatever the case is. Yep. So... First question we ask people many times is, what kind of rules do you give your dog? Correct. And many times that answer is no. Mm-hmm. Or they're a little dumbfounded by the question. And right. uh, we do a lot of little simple things to give dogs rules. Uh, mm-hmm. The invisible line, which basically means thresholds, doorways, and things. Sometimes just making them wait a little bit, teaching them patience. Mm-hmm. That works on the impulse control. Correct. Because we have to start working on calmness and quietness and thinking, focus. Mm-hmm. Focus is probably the best word I could Focus, describe. Focus, attention, yes, you know, connection. Because mm-hmm. that's what it all creates. It's, it's yeah. if, uh, if you don't have that, it's 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 difficult, if not impossible, to, mm-hmm. to start to create an education. That's right. Because they have to start to understand the moment, and it may take several similar moments before they start to be able to connect things. Mm-hmm. And it depends on their level of intelligence and our level of what we're doing, our yeah. timing. You know, the way we're, we're operating. It's how it all comes together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, really, we're people teachers, right? yeah. as well as dog teachers. But it's how we live with our dogs. We talk a lot about lifestyle change. And really, I would think setting a goal before um, even continuing listening to our podcast in the future, thinking about what kind of relationship do you want with your dog, because that's really the goal that you're working toward. And... I ask people regularly, do have you ever met, seen someone in public with their dog who's so connected and in tune, they're without a leash, the dog is with them. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean we're staring at the human all the time. It just means that we are actually connected, kind of like you are with your spouse if you're out for a walk. You're supposed to be together. You're holding hands or chit-chatting, but you're together, right. even though maybe you're interacting with others. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my always my goal. I say the truth is when you're off leash with your dog. Yes. So many people, if you ask them, uh, how is your dog off leash? And they kind of come back at you like, oh my God, I've never <laughs> even tried. And so we can talk about long line works, but we can experiment with that and see how our dog listens through distractions. Mm-hmm. But having that, what I call like your PhD level relationship with your dog, where you can be off leash, be anywhere in the world, your dog is connected to you is compliant to you right and that comes through being more natural with your dog which means both praise and love but also rules and boundary setting and structure it has to come through both not just one or the other Mm -hmm. it does Mm -hmm. and talk about this so much too because really we are our own worst enemy Mm -hmm. we feel really bad about a lot of the things that we need to do because we we assume it has this negativity attached to it yes that comes from our compassion. Yes. You know, we are very Love compassionate, it. loving creatures. And so the the thought of restricting the dog from doing anything that they want or enjoy to that do. That impedes their happiness. Yes. Yes. And and that is a great idea, but it's it's not the way the world works. It's and not, it's not that we're making things negative. But we, we've got to start somewhere with rules. Right. And People rules disagree with us if we're doing something wrong. Yes, right? Our absolutely. parents would, uh, you know, it's an education again. I mean, everything we do is either yes or no. Mm-hmm. 
And if we ignore it, it's a yes. Correct. Many people are taught to ignore bad behavior, uh, turning their back on dogs, um, yielding to them, moving out of their way, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So yes or no, everything's in education. It is, and it's, just, it's really important to me for the sake of the dog. Not yet. A, it makes my life easier. Mm -hmm. The dogs respond and move much faster. Right. But it's, it's to me, it's not fair if the dog doesn't understand that something is wrong. Something yeah. needs to be changed. And it's not always that it's an inappropriate behavior. Maybe right. it just needs to be slowed down, mm -hmm. a little more gentle. Maybe you need to pay more attention and figure out when it's okay to, to behave in whatever way. Right. It's like greetings and excitement levels and where, where it's appropriate, where it's not. I talk about this all the time. Because the way that we communicate with dogs, yes, is a lot of eye contact and body language. Obviously, they don't speak. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's 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 the other forms of communication that even we use, just not as much. But we're teaching the dog. If you don't educate them, it, to me, the, if you step into that and think about you living in a world where nobody has has explained any rules to mm -hmm. you. And you don't speak the spoken you, language. You don't speak the language. Mm -hmm. And, you know, imagine... What that's like when, when you know, think about the dogs that are really sweet. They're crazy. They're wild. And, you know, they're shunned. They're pushed away. They don't get to interact or they're constantly kind of pushed away. Mm -hmm. They're not getting the interaction they're looking for. And they don't know why. Exactly. It's They don't know why anything's happening. And a lot of misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not fair for the dog. Right. Which ultimately decreases whatever it is you want to do. Whether you're having some severe reactions or you just have a dog with really bad manners mm -hmm. yeah, they you're restricting their life exactly because you don't know what to do you can't control them essentially mm -hmm. but you don't need to have to it's not necessarily control it's, it's teaching the dog to learn how to behave and tell them what and when to do once they well, understand it, it is control in a sense right well, i mean it is control but not like i think humans think it's right, not, not overbearing i must control right, you right it's it's like parenting control. It's actually control about making the choices. Parameters. Yes. yes, yes. It's giving parameters. Operate inside these parameters. Yes. Everything's cool. Mm -hmm. If you operate outside these parameters or attempt to operate outside these parameters, then there is a pressure put on you Correct. to get you to change. Mm -hmm. You can also reward once they do the right thing. Right? We're not yes. anti-positivity at all, at all. No, but no, no. there's a proper place to put it. And then we also want to make sure that we're not increasing adrenaline while we praise. Absolutely. And praise could be lots of things. Now, just hitting on that real quick, I think we bring a lot of positivity to what we do. But yes. it's not what most of us associate to positive mm -hmm. when it comes to, to training or teaching dogs. Right. It's with a lower energy level. Yes. It's more natural positivity. And there's nothing wrong with positive reinforcement style training especially with the treats and clickers mm -hmm. and, and and a lot of noise mm -hmm. but there are some places where too much escalation and energy makes things harder yes I, I i relate children and dogs so much if i get take my children and i give them a bunch of sugar and caffeine and let that kick in full blast and then we sit down and try to do math it's gonna bad be very planning. difficult. Yes, bad planning. Nothing wrong with being crazy mm -hmm. and excited, mm -hmm. but when we're trying to achieve certain goals, we, we have to learn to think about things in that fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's we need more focus, more calm. You know, Disneyland state of mind is is for Disneyland. Yes, yes. So setting yourself up and making a plan for the environment that we're going to go right. encounter or work a situation right. and be able to overcome those kind of like things. School. Yes. Yeah. The teacher's not going to teach while everybody's going crazy. That's right. We just sit down and focus, and then we have recess. Mm -hmm. We have gym, mm -hmm. PE, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. There's a time and a place. There's room for everything. There's room for mm -hmm. everything. No, it's true. So what were what would be some examples that you would say of some positivity that comes through that? A is, and then this, this is weird if you haven't maybe experienced it or practiced enough with dogs. Dogs know how you feel, and when I'm positive and happy, they know that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I... I I do a lot of positivity in the way I do things. I use my voice. I do a little mm -hmm. squeaky voice. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of, I allow a lot of things, but I can also see when things are getting out of control. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of like, whoa, too much. Mm -hmm. Letting them know. Um, you know, we use treat training sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually think it was more of like our scale, yes. you know, which we'll, I'm sure, discuss at yes. some point. Of, you know, where are you on, a, on this balance scale? Are you on a negative side, which is nervous or anxious? Mm -hmm. Are you excitable? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do a lot of when dogs are unsure or nervous. Mm -hmm. 
I bring a little something positive to pull them out of the negative something hole. Sweet, yes. To yeah. bring them more to that zero balance state. But this is where we would make a mistake as yes. a natural human. Do you know when to stop? Yes. Right. And for a dog who's nervous with me, I'm a stranger. They're at my center. They're let's say this, they're in a crater. They're outside and, and they're really shy. You know, I can understand. I'm a little mm -hmm. shy. Mm -hmm. You know, believe it or not. And bring a little sweetness, something positive to get them moving, mm -hmm. but then not overdoing it. I don't want to take a nervous dog and create an excited dog. Right, right. Want it right in the middle so mm -hmm. that they can understand balance. So let's teach everybody our scale because that's going to really allow us to share a lot of information. Okay? Mm -hmm. So zero is like zen. I just kind of call it zen. It's the middle of the road. It's a happy, relaxed, submissive dog who's just feeling good and chill mm -hmm. right below zero behaviors are things like worry nervous fearful anxious so mm -hmm. if you think the negative side down there the above side would be hyper excited dominant aggression anything in that family of playful. behaviors playful over playful right? right um so if we think zero and then one to ten on either side of that right then we have to kind of calibrate ourselves when we're working with people because sometimes i think it's a level two and they say it's a level <laughs> eight so ten being the worst that you could ever imagine and one being the thought right so we are big thought catchers. We let, once you are efficient and proficient in seeing language, you can see these little thoughts and stop mm -hmm. things then. So probably our biggest difference between us and others and part of being in the natural world means that we also disagree with behaviors. Absolutely. And uh, we also reward behaviors. It's Balance. True. Balance in all things. I'm sorry so. about that. <laughs> Josh we'll, is getting a phone call during our podcast. We'll sign okay. the phone. Um, yeah, so that's really what makes us different. And I would say the hardest thing for most people is taking excitement and reducing it down to calm, dealing with adrenaline that way. Correct. Because adrenaline is a big part of the issue with dogs. The and higher energy dogs, yes. the harder they are. And coming back to our soft, lovey side, we, mm -hmm. when I say we, I say most, most of us, I want to say, I haven't met many people that, that see it differently, unless it just gets on your nerves mm -hmm. and you're wore down. Excitement is not necessarily happy. No, excitement can just be excitement, over Correct. overwhelming. Yes. Now, I think we, and I understand it because, you know, I've been in this boat at one point in my life. Is You see happiness seem to intensify when you get them excited. Mm -hmm. But in all honesty, I think most of us could agree, if you take away the excitement, they're just as happy. Yes. It's just... I personally, it's just, I know that I enjoy seeing the dog wiggly mm -hmm. and excited, mm -hmm. and I think that's a big part of it And there's well. totally a time for that. Yes. There's a time for cutting loose and playing and, and being at a level 10 playfulness. Right. Totally. But there's a time, just like taking our kids back to the restaurant, yes. there's a time when we're meeting new people, when we're in public, when we're socializing um, in a non-playful way, mm -hmm. that dogs need to learn how to be calm. Yeah, they come back, and as much as I like it and the dog likes it, but what does the dog need? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's not always what, and I, I've, I don't get caught up in always what the dog wants. He's just like me as a father. If I let my children do whatever they want all the time, it's going to cause a problem mm -hmm. at some point. This and, is true. and they don't know. You know? I'm sure true. most of us at a certain point in our life appreciated the rules and boundaries our parents created mm -hmm. for us as children, even though we did not feel that way until this moment. Oh, gosh. Us, we parents, us, you know, and even if you don't have children, you've been around children. Mm -hmm. So we understand that children who understand boundaries, who know how to focus, who have control over their impulses, who are sp spontaneous all the time, are happier, more pleasant children. Mm -hmm. right, so what well, comes down to like a mental exercise mm -hmm. is majority is thinking. Yes, lots thinking of thinking about how you're behaving. Mm -hmm. Just like with us in school, we we call it what art and math. Yes, yes. math and PE work vacation mm -hmm. it's a different state of mind it is they have their place yep and if we don't allow them to think about how to approach things properly their brain never works mm -hmm. it doesn't exercise exactly energy builds up and this is where we we really we've all experienced this i think when the energy builds up it layers up and it's got to find its way out somewhere it very rarely is going to find its way out in a behavior or a state of mind that that we enjoy. That might all be a healthy time. outlet, right? It could be chewing, licking, not listening, barking, barking, destructive behavior. Right. Yes. You know, it's once again like kids. You know, as as you know, you mm -hmm. know, JT is my son. He's five. He's 
He's Wide very, open. very well behaved, and, yes. and and but he is he's he's a high energy child. Very he's busy. a high energy lover. Yeah. And let's say if it were to rain for a solid week or two, like it sometimes does here in Georgia, if I don't get him out and get him busy, we don't find some way to stimulate him. Discharge some energy. He yeah. he can't like I've seen this. He he can't help it. He may come out of his room and he's got one of his toys. He's being all boy. He's banging it around, being a lot really noisy. And so we have to have mm-hmm. the, no, 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 let's calm down. Or you can take that to your room or to the playroom. Mm-hmm. He's very polite. So it's, yes, sir. He goes, no, no arguing. Yep. But I can promise you 10 minutes later, he's back outside with a whole different toy doing very similar Same things. Thing. And he, he, the energy's there. He's got to come out. Mm-hmm. He goes, he focuses, he listens, but then it, it builds its way back up. Yep. How many times have we seen that? Oh yeah. Tons. The dog chews. The dog does this. It's a nice dog. They listen. Can't listen. But then yeah. they're gonna do it again, right? And again, yes. We can't be mad at them. Mm-hmm. You know, we we get like we call it cabin fever. Mm-hmm. I I as an adult can get that way. I can't get satisfied. No, it's you true. Know, I can stand around, walk around, and nothing is making me happy. Yeah. So cabin fever comes from the house in the yard. Correct. House in the yard. House in the yard. You know, when did you go for a walk? Well, <laughs> four weeks ago, last year. But I've got a huge backyard. Yes. Well, you stay it's in the really backyard. Nice. Yeah, I'll I mean, come see you in about a week. We throw a ball and frisbee every day, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is all good. Yeah, never bad. Never beat you up yeah. for that. We don't think about it this way, right? Yeah, well, we don't, you know. So, uh, I also have a nonprofit. You know, we all know it here, but I introduce everybody else to it. It's called Dog Corps, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, so I get to visit poor countries and see a lot of street dogs. And I always go back to street dogs. They don't migrate in the way that birds might migrate or wildebeest might migrate but they move they do have territories but they do move and they work all day not all day but they have to work for what they get there's no kibble in the bowl right and so when i'm around a street dog population nobody pets them Mm -hmm. except for the crazy americans who go to holiday where they are (laughs) um they're not just out biting people you're not seeing i there's some things i really notice about street dogs and i Come, you're, you'll hear me talk about these a lot because they are the epitome of dog. They are domestic dogs who haven't been corrupted by people. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so we get to see this natural side of them, but they scavenge. They scavenge, maybe a tiny bit of hunting, but those guys are tired. They're zero OCD behaviors, zero lick granulomas on your feet. Um, there's zero re- repetitive things. There's no radical aggression. Um, pretty cool thing to see even though i will say that most dogs who live in places like that are miserable from lack of health care and lack of food correct so so mentally they're probably more stable and happy in many areas mentally yes physically, physically not so much. obviously they don't have the care and love that yes we not so much however i do have one of these little pot cakes out of the bahamas that i brought home little mm-hmm. tiki she's awesome but i do meet other pot cakes and other dogs who maybe have come from iraq we meet some who mm-hmm. come from thailand um korea korea a lot of dog meat farm types mm-hmm. and puppy mill types here in america especially um so we work with those kind of kids who sometimes when they come off the streets right they become terrorists here in america they start looking aggressive and behaving aggressively and it's because they have now been cooped up right they've taken them from a natural state to a prison state mm-hmm. you're feeding them you're loving on them but they're not being psychologically satisfied correct so they've become americans <laughs> absolutely and speaking of americans this is, this is a probably a great segue to talk about our culture in america and the way that we think and feel about dogs and it really creates how we behave with dogs when the rest of the world predominantly even if you're let's just say a european you Mm -hmm. know they're much like us they still don't live the same way that we do with dogs totally different mindset correct right poor countries um are not typically soft and squishy with dogs Mm -hmm. dogs are dogs mostly live outside sometimes living inside but mostly outside and they're a little more of an animal in those countries. Yes. And then in Europe, right? They're much like we are. We're very civilized and industrialized. I'm not mm-hmm. saying nobody else is not civilized. We're just uh, progressive. But nobody, um, people in Europe don't ask to pet your dog when you're in public and they're everywhere. Right. right. So I, I found that the first time I went years ago, I thought that was pretty amazing. You know, being in Paris, dogs at, you know, cafes, inside restaurants, mm-hmm. inside little uh, stores and things like that. But I did notice that nobody was walking up asking, could I pet your dog? Mm-hmm. There was no interaction. And the dogs were so in tune to their people. Many times they're not even on a leash. Right. They're just following them through the city. And well, I've heard Americans say, I'm, I wonder if that dog belonged to anybody. Yeah. Pardon our loud neighbor. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's a 
really interesting. I talk a lot about how the American culture keeps us in business. It's true. We do things like Americans. Like, go sit at a Starbucks with a cute little thing. Not even a cute little thing. Just a dog. Anything. Just go sit at Starbucks or a restaurant. And Correct. Many, many people are going to come and try to pet your dog. Now, we're not saying don't pet dogs. Right. But we're teaching dogs humans equal crazy. Just because I may not do it or do it very often doesn't mean mm-hmm. I don't want to. I am a human. Oh, we I have the urge. Yes. Yeah. That's also why I have 21 animals. This is, yeah, exactly. As crazy as that may be. <laughs> I have plenty to touch and live and interact with. Yes, we, we love to touch animals. Now, we're not anti-touch, but back to dogs kind of making associations to things. If every time a person walks up to you and they have a excitable bit of a party with you, would you mm-hmm. think that meeting a person equals excitement? Right. Well, let's create an analogy. Okay. How, how hard is it to be connected, to pay attention to... To be with the human if you're constantly distracted with very positive little rewards. So let's say it, it's hard for me to expect my children to be focused on me and not get lost or distracted constantly if they know every time we go out in public, somebody has candy, cupcakes, yeah, toys. Lollipop, yeah. They're constantly approaching, oh my God, you're so cute. Here, have this. Mm-hmm. It's a reward. It's something that they like. And so, of course, we go out. They're ting, ting. Where's the next person? Mm-hmm. What's going on here? Mm-hmm. Even if it's not looking for certain things. We don't have the the amount of connectivity that we need. Right. That's the, true. I say the majority of their focus is out in the world. And this is the way I think They're of things. We've got a 100% to work with. Yeah. I think things are healthy when I have 51% or more. Mm-hmm. It depends on the dog or the animal, the child, whatever is going on. It's all the same to me. Enjoy what's going on. You know, if you're a dog, sniff, look, mm-hmm. use your nose, use your eyes, use your ears. But let's stay within a certain boundary. And that boundary creates you being connected to mm-hmm. me. And always give me your attention when I ask for it. Correct. That is really the secret sauce, the juice mm-hmm. of life with your dog, is you should be able to get your dog's attention no matter what mm-hmm. for your relationship and safety. Correct. I mean, if, if we lived like that, we'd be running into things constantly. Oh, we'd be true. walking down the street and I'm looking at this and ping, yes, run into a pole, because, run into a sign, mm-hmm. bumping. We've seen this, and how many times have people run yeah. into you mm-hmm. in public oh, yeah, because they're yeah. not paying attention? Well, right now, everybody's got their heads in their phones, they're texting and walking yes. and not paying attention. Which so. I get it, but it can be dangerous. We have to, we have to moderate mm-hmm. it. With dogs, it's the same thing. It is. You teach them to be all over the place, they're going to be all over the place. They're not going to listen. Yep. They're going to get caught up in the moment. Yep. Can you blame them? No, not at all. You can't. They've just been taught this. But mental it's... exercise and physical exercise, right. that combination, yeah, opens up the little flower of the brain, I always Correct. say. You know? And tired dogs, kind of like JT, they're closed down. Right. Tired dogs listen to you a mm-hmm. bit better. The rules and boundaries are crucial. You can have a lot of freedom. Mm-hmm. And this is where I think there's a lot of misconceptions or misinterpretations. And as a human, I think it's natural to focus on the things that we hear about maybe this style of operating that is that are not pleasant. Mm-hmm. They're the parts that we don't enjoy. And it is, it's the restrictive side. We don't mm-hmm. think about the positivity because there is a lot of freedom. Yes. Now, sometimes you have to work your way to get to that point. That's the painful process for, for us is the patience. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, it's all balance. I think everything that we do is finding is, is we talk so much about balance. Our mm-hmm. scale about mm-hmm. the brain is about balance. Yes. And, you know, our, our techniques and our philosophy even as finding a balance between what we believe and how we operate and, and what others do. Mm-hmm. You know, some are open-minded to us, some are not. That's natural. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, but I think a lot of people focus on the same thing. They think that we're mean or we're harsh or we're saying no a lot mm-hmm. and it makes it a negative thing. The dog's having a negative experience. It's, it's really not. No. I want to say no where it's necessary. Only as many times as it takes for the dog to understand because the other side that, that you may not realize is as they behave in a more proper way, things are opening up. There's yes. freedom immediately because that's the, for me, that's the natural reward. As mm-hmm. much as I want to say, good boy, mm-hmm. I don't because I don't want to create too much excitement, mm-hmm. which maybe puts us back to square one. Mm-hmm. I just relax. The rules relax. We get to do more. We mm-hmm. start moving more. You know, if we're walking, we're going to go do more positive things, more mm-hmm. places. If mm-hmm. we're playing or in the house, it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's my feeling. It's the vibe. It's, you know, maybe we, whatever it is you like to do. Mm-hmm. But the more they they understand, the more we get to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many people cannot take their dogs places, nice, or whether they're having a behavioral issue that's more serious because they can't control the dog? Exactly. It's not fair for the dog. No. 
Well, is it rule, back to rules equal freedom. Yes. You'll hear me say that a million times because the more someone understands or something un understands, then the more we get to go versus having to leave them at the house, mm -hmm. uh, which snowballs into the whole Absolutely. boredom uh, here's Here's something for those that could be even questioning and listening to this because I try to put myself in, in the shoes of somebody who's never been in this world. You have to also think about this. Dogs do not learn the way we learn. Not at all. Like, Different we read a book, we sit down, we take a course, somebody tells us what to do, we're guided through the whole process verbally, we get a lot of steps, step-by-step -step instruction. Mm -hmm. We know what to do before we're doing it or as we're doing we it, which makes things it. easy. Well, dogs don't have that option. We can't talk to the dog, we can't show them, they can't read, and so they learn in, in, a, in a more what like most creatures more experiential it, way you have to have whatever experience you're having there has to be some sort of connection there whether it's good it's bad i do i don't mm -hmm. and this is where as a human you can implement timing through mm -hmm. your disagreements mm -hmm. and they can learn by process of elimination That's right. i call it the path of least resistance mm -hmm. the path i want the dogs to find is i promise no different than anybody else it's fun it's, it's happy it's love it's it's all the good things but I know the fastest way to get there and the dog to understand how to do it and what to do and be more more stable is I let them naturally make their own decision and I block it if it's inappropriate yes. or I slow yes. it down until they do it properly. It's almost like you're funneling them into the good right. stuff. Right, yes. yes. I mean, I say, you know, put us in the same situation. Mm -hmm. you, you get dropped in a situation mm -hmm. you've never done. Nobody can mm -hmm. talk to you or tell you what to do. You've got to figure it out. The yeah. easiest thing is for me to I try this and somebody goes, Meh. and they block you. Eh. That's right. It's like operation. Yes. You find the boundaries mm -hmm. and then you figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. you now, the key is you do it without, don't scream, don't yell, don't feel angry, don't be no. angry, don't try to intimidate the dog. No. Emotional fitness. Right. It's stopping, trying to gain some sort of connection, control, yeah. attention. <laughs> And we center, and then mm -hmm. we retry it. Mm -hmm. and we retry it. And this is how they learn. Yep. Now, there are people who maybe take this similar concept, and they're way too harsh. They're way too mean. Or they're not in control of themselves, and they get frustrated. Mm -hmm. They get angry. And then you've got just the outside perception. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of us have gotten the look from their parents. Oh, yeah. Or, their, a bad or their spouse. Correct. Normally the wife. No, it's not mean. The husband. No, it's, it's not mean unless you make it mean. Exactly, yeah. Even on that topic, I, we deal with a lot of nervous, anxious dogs. Mm -hmm. It's very common. Predominance, yes. I have, I know for, for a fact it works very well to put a light amount of pressure on the dog that maybe makes them feel uncomfortable, only to pull it back away. So, And, and I'm talking about like a normal thing. Mm -hmm. Let's say they're nervous and they, they bark at me. Mm -hmm. I disagree with it. Mm -hmm. But then I back off as soon as they stop barking just to show them it the wasn't a big deal and they go right. and it doesn't push them in a hole like many of us may mm -hmm. think okay you don't put pressure on the nervous dog you're gonna make it worse mm -hmm. it's actually no now they trust me yes i said hey we took, don't we do took that to control me control for them and yeah. then i was balanced and i relaxed and they mm -hmm. go oh if you're a nervous hey. person you like an in charge person right now mm -hmm. somebody is yes set screws <laughs> sorry loud <Not> vehicles <laughs> But somebody set rules. Somebody somebody said what is not going to happen or what's mm -hmm. inappropriate, which means they're taking control. Somebody's taking some status. So if you're nervous, you're not built to have that mm -hmm. status anymore. Anyway. That's right. And they did it in a way that did not provoke fear. Mm -hmm. Like cognitive therapy with humans. You're going to yes. do something that makes you uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but then in the end result, if the therapist is doing it correctly, you don't have a negative experience. It came out to be a more positive. I would say it's kind of like for me. Now, not everybody's like me, but it's also funny. I say, you didn't die. Yes. You got to come out. I didn't die. Nothing bad happened. It wasn't as traumatizing as it was as I thought it might be. Mm -hmm. And yes, maybe you don't love it. You're not comfortable with it, but you're a little micro step closer. Yes. And then the repetition and the mm -hmm. repetition, and as things are allowing to, you can start to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're putting a little something to numb that nerve over time. Over right. time, you kind of it gets uh, less sensitive and less sensitive. Right. So the more you practice, the easier it gets. Plus, when you take over the dog. You begin the process of trust. The yes. structure brings about trust. And if you're mm -hmm. nervous and fearful, you need to trust somebody. Absolutely. You know, because I call it the middle schooler that pays the mortgage. When you have a nervous dog who is in charge of their family, that is why you're seeing all this overreactivity. Right. They don't know what to do with it. They can't cuss you out. Right. So 
they try to bite you. <laughs> it's an overreaction. We, mm-hmm. we do the it same is. thing in, in areas. When when the stress hits mm-hmm. and it comes down to do or die, yep. you got to do something. Yep. Some if you don't know what to do, you freak out. The best yeah. defense is a big offense sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that might roll through my head if I were in a situation I felt completely overwhelmed and helpless. Mm-hmm. This, for some weird reason, maybe it'd be one of my weird dreams. Yeah. I have a, a, I'm going to be attacked by a group of people. <laughs> If I don't know what to do, my last option might be I'm just going to act like a crazy maniac and hopefully they run away. Whether it works or not, maybe. Yeah, well, we, and we see that. It's natural. It's dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why right. they behave this way. Yep. But we can help. Well, and there's a few things to learn about not taking it personally. Mm-hmm. You know, we will kind of fall back on the things that we kind of men- we see as like mentoring behaviors and how we get here. But not taking things personally. A teaching, when a dog does something they're not supposed to do, it has nothing to do with you. Right. You know, most people are so narcissistic, it's everything to do with them, and then they get mad and upset because they're trying to teach the dog something, the dog's not listening. Well, it's a process. It Everything's is. a process. It you is. have to progress through it and teach. So, not to be upset. And then the other side of that is thinking about, like, what is praise, right? So, right. Uh, praise is a lot of things. Not all dogs are food motivated. Mm-hmm. We, we deal with those. Um, you know, we talk with different dogonalities and uh, different humanalities in that match, but some dogonalities are zero in the food. But maybe they're awesome sniffers. Maybe they're super social. Maybe mm-hmm. they just want to sniff the new human coming in. Well, I just teach you if you calm down, you get to sniff the person. Correct. Right. Maybe the person doesn't give you a treat. You don't care about that. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you're a crazy ball lover. Right. So maybe new people can make friends through a ball after we meet quietly. Absolutely. Um, all sorts of things. People coming into the house. People you know, like, I don't let the dog come to the person right away if they're crazy. Mm-hmm. So once you calm down, the reward is... You get to sniff the new Whatever person. it is they wanted That's to do. That's right. Whatever it is you want to do in this moment, as long as it's healthy. So Correct. praise can be so many different things. We just have to learn to see it. It's individual. It is. It is. So, um, well, we hope we've given this kind of introduction so you can see who we are. Some, you know, people call me the Dr. Phil of the dog world because I'm brutally honest. And I believe mm. in being brutally honest because it's uh, how I help you. It's not making excuses for a dog or a human ever. Right. Normally when we start pointing things out and we're trying to understand why they became this way in their family, some many people want to make excuses for the dog because they love them so much. But right. it's kind of like enabling behavior in the human world. Yes. And like you mentioned, what we do with dogs is literally cognitive behavioral therapy. Yes. Just like people do. It's just that we call it natural dog behavior or dog psychology. But mm-hmm. they need to go into situations that cause problems. Yes. and learn how to work them. We don't believe in distracting a dog from a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, no distracting a dog if you're least reactive. You need to learn how to look at the dog and behave. Yes. We don't want to make you look away. Right. So these are some of the real basic things. We're going to get deep into it. We're going to get super deep into kids and dogs, mm-hmm. um, really making that connection. We're having a lot of kid problems right now with the lack of structure and rules with children. And um, you know, if you like this these thoughts and ways of thinking i think you'll enjoy what we do and you know but if you listen to tony robbins you'll love us if you're a caesar milan lover you'll love us if uh if you've ever been into wayne dyer eckhart tolle oprah winfrey um all these teachers in the world who really have some cool things to say and Mm -hmm. it's kind of where i get all my thoughts feeling and education and um always be the student absolutely we never stop being students dogs teach us things every day People teach us things every day. I love people, not just dogs. Absolutely. I don't prefer dogs over people. I love them both. (laughs) You know, I have to teach them both. So, um, anything else you'd like to add and wrap up with? And we're going to, we would love to see your comments down below because we want to know what you want to know. That's that's what I was going to say. Yes. I want to know, you know, not only, you know, what specific topics do you want to know more about or, or issues or problems? I want to I want to really tap into the community that, that feels that's curious about this, but maybe feels like it is too abrasive, or mm-hmm. they're nervous about it, or the problems it may cause. Because mm-hmm. I, I really like to focus a lot on getting everybody understanding and liking it on board that wants to be that maybe mm-hmm. has a hard time, so that I can explain the soft side of what you maybe see yes. as, as as a little forward or abrasive, and and mm-hmm. getting in my head and seeing how we do things. Yeah, and so much is like we say. There's so many things that you can do. That aren't what they seem. Exactly. Or what it looks like, yes. or what, what it feels like. It's all about the intention and the way you do it. Mm-hmm. You know, disagreeing doesn't have to be a bad thing. Rule study doesn't have to be a bad thing, but mm-hmm. it can be. 
Yes. Just they like in our be. world. Yes. There are some people who implement rules and boundaries and they are, are not nice about it. Mm-hmm. Or they're some, bullies. Yes. Some love their job and they're here to make a difference in our mm-hmm. community and they do it well. Yes. It requires cooperation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, cooperation doesn't always have to be an option. But, exactly. you know, this, this is what I want to get into is, is, you know, what do you see in further, further explanations? Mm-hmm. Well, point. we'll put some links too. We'll make some show notes and such, and we'll put some links on some things that uh, we enjoy learning and reading about, and maybe yeah. share. Um, you know, we uh, also love the Pirellis, Linda and Pat Pirelli. Absolutely, they are natural horsemanship people, just like we are natural dog people. We they are, are working on dogonality together, which Correct. is a dog personality assessment coming out very soon. Um, we're beta testing as we speak, and uh, we got a lot of cool stuff on the horizon. The book will be ready here shortly. But yeah, we want to hear questions. We're not afraid of uh, positive or negative questions. We like to Correct. help people and answer. And we know that not everybody is going to agree with us. That's okay. Mm-hmm. We uh, we, below, we we really believe in forming a tribe. And if Absolutely. you love us, come on. If not, ask questions. We're okay with it. Correct. But um, nature is nature. We don't fight it. And we just hope to bring more people into this instinctual side. Right. So we want there again come balance. We want to find the balance between nature and the human world. We've got to find an in between. That's right. We are who we are. We are. We are. And we just want everybody to be happy. So really, our our message is really deeply seated in love and positivity, um, but also in Mother Nature and how she does things, which means there's a yin and a yang, a yes and a no, a mm-hmm. positive and a negative, but not negative as in hurtful. Um, it's just a teaching. Correct. So hopefully this message will spread. We hope that you take it and you teach somebody else and turn them on to our podcast. Absolutely. Please subscribe. You know, give us a, we hope you love what we do and, you know, give us a, a rating on our podcast so that we might help spread and grow and let us know if there's anybody you'd love to see on our podcast. If you'd like to have someone interview, if you have any ideas, let us know. Absolutely. All right, kids. Well, subscribe, join us next time. And, uh, We'll see you then. Thank you.